Greetings, everyone. Welcome back to Dawn and Dreams. It is Priestess Aisha, aka Ms. Z. Thank you so much for tuning in to another video. If you would, please make sure that you like and subscribe. Comment down below which one you chose. I love to read the comments. Um, just a few announcements before we get started. So we are still in anniversary season. So shout out to everybody that's been supporting. Um, I really appreciate it. We have been going very, very hard behind the scenes when it comes to the products. I've been putting out some of my best work. So please, you know, check out the shop. We have, um, excuse me, we have dream catchers. We have bracelets. I'm also going to be updating some of the products, um, some of the spiritual work that I have, which is my baths and my soaps. So just check that out at DonnaDreams.com. That is also where you can book a reading if you are needing that. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this reading. We're going to be finding out who you were in a past life. I am really excited about this reading because we're going to look and to see, you know, some reflections of what you did in your past life and who you were. And, you know, this is a very empowering reading. So, you know, expect for you to become a little bit emotional about this and reflecting on who you were. All right, so we have Pal 1. Excuse me, I want to tap the feather. So, pal one, pal two, or pal three. So, today we're picking feathers. My partner says he likes when I have the feathers out. So, we got the feathers out today. Pal one, pal two, or pal three. And, of course, if you need more time, please pause the video. But we're going to get right into it, okay? All right, so for pal number one, you pick this feather, which comes from um, the Western Marsh Harrier. Um, but anyway, the point of this feather, or the message, let me say that, the message of the feather that it gives is being fearless, okay? So in your past life, you know, the first message that comes is that you were fearless. You weren't afraid of anything, you know? Um, you took a lot of risks in your past life. You know, you went, um, you went that extra mile to get whatever it was that you desired and there really wasn't any fear behind what you chose to do okay so let's figure out who you were in a past life Okay, so I'm seeing a pattern here. So in your past life, you were someone who told or brought a lot of truth, okay? Because I see records and um, knowing revealed, okay? So for some of you, this goes way back to, you know, it says the stone people. So this goes way back to like writing and carving, you know, on the walls and setting the records for people to find them in this day and age. So you had a very important job. And I don't even feel like the people in the past probably, you know, um, how do I put that? You know how you may do something, but, you know, a lot of other people don't see the value in it. You know, oh, you might be writing in a diary or something like that. And they're like, what are you doing that for? You know, let's go play outside. Let's go do something else. Why are you even, what's the point of you doing that? And then years later, they're like, oh, my God, you kept records of that? So, you know, I don't feel like whoever you are around or the people that you are around or your people, let's say, for instance, they probably appreciated, or I'm sorry, they didn't really value you maybe taking the time to record some of the things that were happening back in the day. But it's like you knew that in some way it was going to matter, even if it didn't matter in your time period, okay? Because I see this going sideways, like records, like you keeping records of things. But I also feel like you were a person that had to use a lot of your energy. People relied on you a lot in the past life. So there's some type of leadership here that you had. Some type of leadership where you were responsible for a lot of things, but in your spare time or in your downtime, 
you were recording things, you were making record of things. And again, I don't see anybody taking a lot of value in you doing these things, but at the same time, it helped us in today's day and age or a thousand or a hundred thousand years later, that type of thing. So you kept some records and like you marked the place that you used to go because there was a lot of change. And I don't really feel like you liked the change, but you knew that, you know, this is something that had to go on. Like in order to find food, uh, find fertility, um, things like that. So I see a lot of traveling, you know, um, nomadic energy. Like there's a lot of one place to the next because I see a lot of change from different environments. And I feel like you've lived in different environments too. You've lived in, you know, colder areas to more warmer areas too in your past. Like there was a constant uh, uh, energy of travel that's coming to me. But it, weirdly enough, there was one place that you called home. And I'm just going to go with this because I know that, you know, there may be a lot of people watching and it's going to apply to um, different people in different ways. But this is the energy of there was one place, there was one place that you considered home. But I'm feeling like the change came from um, other influences or like maybe you moved as a group. You understand what I'm saying? Like there was a vote of, okay, there's not enough food here, so we got to go somewhere else. And you're like, no, this is home. You know, I know this land. I know everything that's going on here. And it's like, you know, you had to do what you had to do. So there was a lot of movement from home. So in this life, you may have a lot of anxiety issues when it comes to leaving a safe space. Because wherever this was, there was a place that you called home. And it was like stationary for you. It was fertility. It had a lot of things going on. I'm not sure what was the reason for leaving. It could have been animals. It could have been um, invasion. I'm not sure exactly what the reason was, but there was a certain place that you considered home, but, but there had to be movement. And it was because of the group, the collective group's opinion that or viewpoint that you had to go ahead and go with them. Hmm. Let me clarify this because I'm seeing clarity. Mm. So in your past life, you didn't take things so seriously either. Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of community, a lot of community. So um, a lot of things for you in the past life were based on a collective opinion. And this is a message to you from your past life. We're still going to be looking into who you were in a past life, but this is a message from your past life. They're speaking on rituals of joy, an hour of power. So this means in your past life, you know, you actually enjoy drumming. And like I said, there was a lot of community. Uh, there was a lot of respect for, you know, other people, other people's space, who they were. Um, everybody had a sense of value in this collective community that you were in your past life. And so this is going sideways, meaning that, you know, in today's day and age or what you're seeing around you is not that way. A lot of people don't have respect for elders or their parents or, you know, their, their brother, their sister. There's not a lot of that going on. And, you know, in your past life, you did have that. You had a place. You had an opinion. And again, this is the reason why you even moved from a place that you love. It was because the collective opinion mattered, you know, the opinion of the group mattered to you in that, in that previous life. So in the past life, there was, um, you know, again, there was a time for prayer or just uh, prayer is, you know, the word that we might use to describe it, but essentially, um, another word, well, another way to describe it would be basically having, um, community fires, dancing, channeling spirit. So there was a time that you were very, very connected to the creator or the divine energy. You can also call this energy God. Um, you were very connected. There was no in-between with that too. I'm not seeing no in-between here. It was just you and the creator. Do you see that in that picture? Like it's just, you know, there's no middleman. And what I mean by this is there's not like I'm not going to say there probably wasn't any, but in your time period or in this past life or 
let me just say this, your people, okay? Because there might have been other people who were doing different things, but I'm just seeing that with your people, it was literally no middle man. There was no going to like a priest or anything like that to connect with the creator. You did this directly, okay? Um, I hope I'm making sense. You did this directly. So if you were to say, let's say for instance, let me try to give an example. Um, you know, there's no food. We need to pray for food. Well, you guys either did it collectively as a group or you were responsible for doing that for yourself. You never said, hey, somebody else pray for me. People, you know, pray for me. And I'm not saying people didn't pray for you, but it's like you had your own connection with the creator. Your own. You were responsible for your own connection. And I hope I'm making sense because it's hard to put in, you know, words what I'm trying to say. But if, if there was no middleman, there was no going to a priest or a church or anything like that to try to connect. Like you already had that source energy within you and you understood that. And so, and you had times where you would drum or you would, you know, be in a group dancing and you all would be enjoying spirit on the same level. There was no hierarchy when it comes to connecting to the creator. That's what I'm trying to say. There was no hierarchy. There was no, you're closer to God than me. No, we're all close to God. So when you see these things today where there's like hierarchies, you're kind of confused because you didn't have that in your collective space or group. We all were connected individually, um, and it's like it was the same. And if you weren't connected to it, then that's on you. But everybody has equal opportunity to connect with the creator, to get an answer from the creator. And this still goes in with being fearless because I feel like, again, you know, there wasn't a lot of like challenging each other of those, of those type of things, if you understand what I'm saying. Mm. And in your time, I feel like opposites were was a beautiful thing. It was a very beautiful thing. Like, it wasn't a problem to be different from somebody else. Like, we all had something to bring to the table. Mm. I'm also seeing a lot of fertility. But I feel like fertility for you was marriage, children, and those type of things in that past life. I see a lot of allies and support. Let's switch up a little bit. Okay, what was your past life like? Whew. Okay, so all that came together and then I'll probably pull a few cards from here and then we're going to close out on this one, okay? What's a past life like? All right, so let's see. First, we'll start with Spirits of the North. This is in reverse. So when everything's coming in reverse, it tells me there's some messages that they want to give you directly. Your past self does. Okay, warrior spirits. Mm. I told you that you were fearless, so this makes sense. You were actually, um, well, some of you were warriors, and I feel like you might not even have considered yourself that, but it's like you were, um, you were able to fight like on the spot. So you're not used to like the legal system that we have here today and people putting a lot of rules on things. I'm not going to say there wasn't any rules or, you know, uh, um, lines of respect and things like that. But at the same time, I feel like you could have took matters into your own hands back in the day. So if somebody abused you or something like that, you didn't have to wait around for the law to come in. You would get up yourself and handle that. Or you would get, you know, your group of people and go ahead and handle it right then and there. Okay. And people were connected to their spirit team. So they weren't just fighting with their hands. They also had the ancestors that, that were fighting with them back in the day. That was a known thing. You didn't just come with whatever. You came with your with your, your arrow, but you also came with your spirits as well, too. Mm. Back in the day, you didn't really concern a lot of small issues. I feel like you focused on resolution. Mm. You had an altar back in the day. You were responsible for this altar. Like I said, there was a time where it was just you and the creator. And there was also an altar for ancestors and things of that nature. 
So you were a person that was giving the offerings to um, for the spirits. Mm. Ah, Shay, you are oracle as well too. Mm. So you predicted the future. And this is probably the reason why you did a lot of decisions that, or you made a lot of decisions, even if it was against what you wanted, because you could see things. Okay. And again, I feel that connection to the creator helped with that as well, too. You had an ongoing connection with the creator. So this oracle uh, within you was very, very powerful. And it probably still is powerful today. Okay. It's just a reflection. Um, and a lot of times you're going to have a lot of the skills that you had back in the day, or you're going to be working towards it in this life. So yes, they're saying that you are an oracle. You seen, I feel like it was a mixed world where you seen the past life and this life, um, excuse me, not the past life. You seen the physical and the spiritual world just operating with each other. This is a message from your past life to pay attention to your health. Yes. Like I said, there was marriage. There was marriage. You had either a husband or a wife, and you also had kids. Um, you also had a lot of things worth value, but value has changed today. That's what they're saying. Mm. There was a lot of balance in your life back in the day, um, especially when it comes to responsibility. You, had, you were responsible for a lot even then, but I feel like there was more balance, like an equal exchange of energy. So that's something that you should take into accord this life. Knowing your worth and knowing your value. Mm. They're saying there's illusions surrounding wealth. What is wealth? Sometimes it's not going to be, you know, the high dollar um, um, name brand thing that we see today. It's not going to be that. You know, what is it for you? You have to decide what is that for you? What does wealth look like for you? That's what your past life challenges you to do. Figure out what is wealth, what is meaningful to you. All right, let's go on to pile number two. I spent a long time on this pile. All right, pile number two. Who were you in a past life? Okay, so the first thing I'm getting is that um, this is funny, but some of you were like merchants or you were people who brought creative ideas to the community, okay? Um, there's something to do with smell. I don't know if you like smell goods or, you know, stuff like that. And this is, it may sound funny because a lot of people don't, you know, like perfumes and stuff like that. Like me, I have to wear a lot more natural perfumes if I can because my, my skin gets irritated. But anyway, you know, it, it seems like something to do with smell or just, you know, uh, uh, the way people look, the way people dress. I don't know. There's some type of uh, energy surrounding a creativity when it comes to um, people elevating in their looks and the way that they used to smell. Like, I don't know. That's funny. But anyway, let's get to this one. Who were you in a past life? And you picked the secretary bird. That's interesting. Hmm. That's interesting. I wonder if you're going to elaborate on that or, I'm gonna, or am I going to have to do it? So let's see. Mm. Yeah, you were very, very, um, like you utilized your energy in powerful ways in the past life. You didn't waste any time in your past life when it came to creating. I feel like some of you were, cre were creating at a very, very young age, okay? Shay. All right, so you have um, healing, seeking, finding. Mm. So you were a healer. And that's what I was going to say. I was like, are you going to say it or am I going to say it? I'm talking to this feather here. Um, so with the secretary bird, and we know that a secretary bird stomps out snakes. So the first thing that they're telling me is that you had like some type of, and it's also like, um, what is it called? I don't know what it's called when you have like a little uh, a shield against like venom. I don't know what that's called for the bird. I, I researched it and everything. And I can't think of the words to, to put it in words. But anyway, they're, um, I don't know what that's called. But anyway, let's, let's just stick to what I was trying to say. Like basically you have the antidote to a lot of different things. Um, you have the medicine to a lot of different things. So this gives me a lot of medicine woman, medicine man type of vibes in your past life. Um, you were, you know, the solution to a lot of people who dealt with rich witchcraft in the past, 
um, negative energy, negative spirits. You've dealt with that, okay? Um, you were a protector in your past life, but this comes off more like in a spiritual sense um, than even a physical sense. So I see some of you like making potions, literally, um, in your past life to help with negative energy that was coming across to people. Mm. Some of you were on a spiritual uh, quest to understand um, why we were here, why we're here, okay? Mm. You, yeah, you really, really were a, a protector. I don't want to say, you know, I don't want to speak on, but I feel like, you know, your transition from that round was because of a sacrifice that you made. Like your, you and your essence, your bring up in your past life was protector. I protect people, okay? Um, and that, that was the case very, very strongly. You put yourself in the way of others so that they don't get hurt. And this was on a physical level too. Yeah, you knew how to purify people, okay? You did a lot of purification rituals. Mm. You were someone who could bring the rain, storms, stuff like that. Yeah, I'm seeing a change in weather. You helped your people get victory in some way, shape, or form. When they were battling with other people, you help people get victory. And like I said, this is in a spiritual sense, but I also see that you, even on a physical sense, you were very strong. You were very, very strong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you were very multi-talented in your past life because I see new abilities. This is what I was talking about when it comes to the creativity aspect of you. Like you were always inventing something, inventing some type of something, a boat, um, fire, things like that. You would invent new things for people to use, usable energy. Like you would get ideas and it seems like it was sparked from your... Um, from your connection to the creator or with the spirits. Like you were the person that would probably go to sleep and go to the dream round, get some answers and come back with usable energy. Respond with a new creation, okay? Mm -hmm. So you were the person that, you know how you have like that, I don't wanna say what I wanna say, but you know how you have that person that always has whatever you need, you know? <laughs> And nine times out of ten, it'd be the people that don't really have no money, but they have everything that you need. What you need. You know, that type of thing. You were the person that could grab it in your bag and give it to somebody. Mm. Yeah, I told you, self-expression. Um, there was some type of energy surrounding, like I said, looks or something like that. That was important. Like you started some type of trends back in the day. Even in the past life. So if people started wearing shirts because of you, that was the case. If people started painting their face because of you, that was the case. And it had meaning behind it. It was very meaningful. But you started a lot of trends back in your past life as well too. So I feel a lot of inventor type of energy with this. You were the one that gave different opinions on things. So you always questioned authority. You always question reality, and because of this, it brought new perspectives on things. You had a lot of self-expression, okay? And you were very connected to your innocence and your inner child. So this means that you were, again, you're just a very creative person in your past life. Oh, and I didn't even see that medicine bundle. Bundle, and I believe I said medicine man, medicine woman in the beginning. And like I said, it's still that image of pulling things out of your bag. Whatever somebody needed, you had it. And I don't know why I start thinking of like, you know, nowadays we have like people. I'm not gonna go there. I'm not gonna go there. I was thinking of something. 
Mm. Uh, I'm do this again because there's a lot of cards. I'm going to try again. All right. Okay. So you live many lives. That's why I'm going to say uh, already you lived a lot of lives. Okay. Um, but this is, I'm just trying to focus on one. All right. Creative. Okay. Look, I make that up. Creative. Inspired. I don't make this up. I literally just said this whole reading. And it comes out in a different deck to say the same thing. Inspire, creative, drive. Remain focused on your goals, keep your head clear. But the point of what I'm trying to say is that, um, and what I'm probably gonna do is just pull cards because this is too much. But yeah, so you were very, very creative back in the day. Despite any challenges that you had, very nurturing to your ideas. So let's see. Mm-hmm. You would actually call spirits down. That's interesting. You would call spirits down to get answers or to get assistance. You know, like, like I said, if you were in battle or something like that or you were going to war with someone, hey, let me call down, you know, um, Ogun. Let me call down uh, a, a, a thunder being. Like, let me call down somebody to help me with this situation. That's kind of how you were. <clears throat> Yeah. Used to protect people when it came to um, their energy, their foundation, their relationships, and their success. Okay? You could sense unwanted energy. Okay? And so that's why you would come and purify things. You would come in their homes, all those type of things, the village, whatever you want to call it. You would come in and purify things and recenter them. Mm hmm. All right. Everything you did back in the day had a purpose. And it's interesting, but the people within your past life, they appreciate you for what you did for them then, okay? And this is probably the same case surrounding you now. But in your past life, people really appreciate all the hard work that you would do um, surrounding the community. It's kind of like a handyman or something like that, but you were always there to fix things, help with things um, on a spiritual level or even on a physical level. Mm-hmm. You didn't miss out on any opportunities. You didn't procrastinate a lot. Mm. You used to go through initiations to level up. Like you would go through spiritual initiations to level up. Interesting. The message from your past life comes to don't waste your life working for others. Fulfill your dreams. Be motivated. Know your work. So they're basically saying this past life version of you is saying that um, you know, life is too short and also, you know, it needs to be worth living. So they're speaking on in your past life, you used all of your energy to do many different things. And through this, you became someone who was very needed in the community. But not only that, you were also abundant in that way. Um, your past life stuff is speaking about, um, having the freedom to follow your own path and follow your intuition. And not being afraid to call on your spirits, your spirit guides, your ancestors, uh, uh, the earth beings. Not being afraid to call on these things because that's what you did in the past life. You used to call on, you know, the spirits and things like that, the animals, all of that to help you and support you through your goals. And so they're still with you in this life. Mm. Yeah, the time period that you lived through was one where um, they were capturing people and, and, like I said, going to war with people. So you had to use your energy to, um, like, help with your people when it came to victory and succeeding in war and things like that. All right, so that is for pile number two. Let's go on to pile number three. All right, so for pile number three, you chose my martial eagle feather. I hope I'm saying it right. But it's the strongest eagle in Africa, okay? So, off the bat, this tells me that um, some of you were very physically built. Um, and for some of you, you were very spiritually built, okay? Uh, uh, this is a very, very noble bird. When I communicate with this bird, very, very noble. It likes order. 
So already this is telling me that you have some sense of authority. Now strength does not just come from your physical appearance. So I'm not just saying that for some of you, you know, it could be a very selective view. You kind of, you could have been built like, you know, a bodybuilder or something like that. But for others of you, it had nothing to do with your physical appearance. Like you were just strong when it comes to your mentality, when it comes to um, like the authority that you were putting down, like, you know, like this, like a, like an iron fist, like I, what I say is, and, and that's it, you know, um, people have to listen to you because of your, your sense of leadership. But again, very noble person. So you would do what is right, regardless of how other people felt about it. And I feel like a lot of people didn't like you in the past because of some of the decisions that you had to make. But it was for the greater good. You know, you didn't just look at, okay, so I'm going to take your side because I feel bad for you. No, you look at the whole situation. The whole situation. Um, in the past and seeing what was best for the whole crew. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, this one gives me really, really big energy. Real, real big energy. Um, meaning like you were like on top because I feel like you have some allies and support from other tribes or other places, other kingdoms, something to that effect that you couldn't jeopardize. So you've made a lot of hard decisions, okay, in your past life. Mm. Let's see. Yeah, this is why people didn't like you because just when they thought that you were going to make this decision, you make the opposite decision. <laughs> You're like, no, 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 I'm not going to do that because I need to do this for the greater good, for the community. But, you know, a lot of people didn't understand you had a lot of wisdom. Mm. And you did keep records of the things that you did. So this is interesting. This pile here, you should be able to uh, come across. I feel like your past life self wants to, <laughs> this is hard to say, but... It's like it wants to come through in this life. Now, how do I put that? It wants to be in sync. So what I mean is for some of you, you're going to be able to find links to your past life. And I've had about two people who were able to, that I know of, who were able to actually find their past life self because it was recorded. Like they have some type of statue of themselves. And it was the craziest thing. I don't want to tell the old story, but it was the craziest thing when the person had showed me. And I was like, is this, you know, is this, what is this? It, this looks like you, you know, I'm thinking like it's some type of edit, but no, it was an actual statue of that person in that place. And I'm like, are you serious? I said, you look just like this person. And they were like, yeah. <laughs> so, um, that's what I mean. Like you should be able to, well, some of you, maybe not all of you, because I know it's challenging to do that. But I feel like your past life self wants to come through so strongly that you will find uh, whatever statue or, you know, things that resemble you from your past life. Either a picture, a statue, or it's going to be something to where you're doing some of the exact same things. Okay? Hmm. Okay, some of you had like an animal totem or something like that that's coming through as well too because even with this eagle, you might have had maybe a leopard, a lion, something. You might have had some type of connection with an elephant. There's some type of big animal totem that you had as well too. But yeah, you were able to get anything that you wanted. Mmm. 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 This is weird because with you, I see a lot of rituals being performed, you know, for you and around you. Yeah. Yeah. You had a lot of rituals. And the reason why I say around you is because I, I can't lie. I feel like you might have had some people and I don't want to call them like, um, like maids or things like that. I don't want to say that. I want to say, and it, it could possibly be, but it doesn't, it feels like such an ancient time period that that might not have been a word for it. But you did have people, and I don't even want to call them servants, but I just feel like there was people around you who had a certain job to keep your, keep your space cleansed 
um, and would do rituals of purif purification around you, like if you went to war or something like that. Okay, we're gonna move on. Yeah. Yeah, you are a very, very powerful energy because original source. So this tells me that like, and I don't want to solidify this, you know, like get a reading to make sure. But in this reading, I'm going to say some of you come from original source energy. So this is like your second life. If that makes sense, like you come from that original source energy. Mm. Mm. Your, your spirit is so powerful that it feels like, how do I explain that? You will only come back when it's absolutely necessary. Your energy is so powerful that it feels like that of what we would call gods and goddesses. You know how it really was humans, if we had to speak on it, or what we call humans that were deified because of all the, the power that they have. You know, being able to, that's what I was saying, like able to walk through fire. Like this is what I'm seeing right here, able to walk through fire. You were very, very powerful um, as a person. You had a lot of strength and a lot of spiritual strength as well too. Like I said, some of you might've been physical, physical strength that was beyond, you know, certain means. And some of you, it might've been spiritual strength that was beyond certain means, okay? And when I mean spiritual, I mean like you could move something, you know, and people can literally do this, but I'm not sure if it's on the level that it was back in the day where you can look at something and move it or, you know, um, open up doors without even touching anything, like stuff like that. You had a lot of spiritual power and it was nothing back in the day. It wasn't something that was like, oh my God, they're moving things. It was just to a point where they would recognize you as like, oh, so this is the person. So they thought you were like, and maybe this is what it is, but they thought you were like um, the savior, so to speak. Like they knew that you came from like uh, the creator, you know, and everybody comes from the creator. But what I'm trying to say is like you have so many powers. There was like, OK, you know, this is a little odd. This person comes from something to where it's like they were empowered through the creator directly. Um, so your powers were very, very fluid back in the day. Okay. And so, like I said, this could be your second life and you might have lived other lives too. I don't want to just solidify it, but for some of you, this is like your second time coming back. And that was your first time during this period. And then this is your second time coming back now because you got work to do. Okay. You have to change things. But you were definitely chosen because of your, you know, your non-biased opinion and the things that you have to do here. Okay? And it's, it shows you were very, very respected. And I'm even seeing people, like, bow down to you, but not in the ways that we see it today where it's like, you know, um, like you're, you're uh, venerating somebody. It wasn't really in that sense. Um, I like to put it back to a principle that I learned in um, a certain tradition where it's like, you know, I'm not bowing to you. I'm bowing to the presence and energies around you. I'm bowing to the ancestors and, you know, showing respect to the creator, the, the divine God, you know, that is within you and who is operating through you to be able to manifest all these things for us, which is prosperity, this, that, the third. Okay. So, yeah, so there's a lot of powerful energy here. And there was a lot of respect here because, again, they felt that original source energy that came through. So that's powerful. Let's see. Mm. This is weird too. Some of you had like you started some type of uh, what would be considered like a religion or something to that effect because you had initiations going on around you. Basically a level for people to begin to level up spiritually to elevate things like that. You had a very powerful connection to earth. And like I said, you come from the original source. So it's like you, you have a very um, powerful connection to earth. And this is why I said you had a lot of big animals around you um, to represent your authority and what you were able to say and, you know, laying down some of the laws. Okay. Mm. Prayer and a peace. Yeah. You are also a prayer warrior, so to speak. Because I know it might not have been called that in the past. <laughs> yeah, 
You use your energy to kind of shape how we live today in, in, in many ways. But like I said, this person from that past life is trying to be in sync with you today to give you as much power as you had back in the day. Because being reborn, you have, I told you, the oracle. So a lot of you were spiritually strong. A lot of you were oracles, but you also had a lot of spiritual power, okay? You would see the living and the dead, this, that, the third. So you had more power than the average person. It wasn't uncommon during this time period to be spiritual, but, you know, if you had more power than the average person, you were definitely noticed, okay? So that's why I see that. And it could have been birds, too. But it's some type of connection with animals. And also, you could communicate with them as well, too. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I'm seeing that you would stand up for a lot of injustice. Or you would also pass judgment in certain ways, too. And like I said, a lot of people didn't like you for this. <laughs> But at the end of the day, it didn't matter because it was something that needed to be done because you were that type of leader. You had to put people and set people straight. And I don't know why, you know, and this is due to my partner probably getting my deck because I don't know why there's two oracles in this deck. But for it to come out twice, that means something. Like that was a really, really big part of your story um, in your past life. You had a lot of spirit encounters. You also had the gift of listening. All your gifts were tapped in. Hearing messages beyond this round uses hear spirits. You can see them. Like, it was a very, very how. This is why. This is what they're telling me. They said it took you a while to come back because the job was extremely draining. Like, I'm getting drained right now. I can feel it. Like, the job that you had back in the day was extremely draining. And so, and like I said, you were infused with a lot of fucking, excuse me. <laughs> You were infused with a lot of energy. Like you were <laughs> you were infused with a lot of powerful source energy. So it's like for you to come back, like it was like, please come back. Please, please. You're like, no, no, no. I did all that work in the past. I did all these things in the past. I set the foundation. I I predicted the future. I helped people get their life together. And now I gotta come do it again. And it's like, yeah, you gotta come back. You gotta come back and do this again. Because the way the world is set up now, they need you. So you were convinced almost to come back. Because um, it's like you're one of the custodians. Let's say that you're one of the custodians for the creator. So this is, it was important for you to come back. And that's why I said like you had some type of religion or something, so to speak, set up. Some type of spiritual practice for people to follow so they could be close to the creator like you were. You know? Let's get a couple more cards and we want to close out. Yeah, y'all, y'all draining my energy in this pile. Okay. Mm. You're here to, and this is the message from your past life. You're here to remind people of their ancestors. Remind people of the old ways. Okay, the old ways of the world that helped to really secure the foundation, the natural laws. And let me put that into perspective too. It wasn't just any laws that you were laying down. It was the natural laws, the natural order. Meaning don't cut down 50,000 trees and expect for good luck to come to you, right? You can cut down a few trees, that's okay. But when you're cutting down the whole you know, ecosystem, then that natural law is gonna come in and play in your life. And so that's what you were here to do. You were here to set the natural law. And again, some people didn't like it because some people were greedy. But it didn't matter because you had, you had a job to do. And that's the same job that you're here to do today. Mm. And, you know, your past life is really still with you because you have higher guarding is assisting you. So it's that energy, that powerful energy that you had in the past life is still assisting you. Okay? Um, you can look at yourself every day in the mirror and speak to it. Right? Um, but yeah, you were, you came in and made a revolution. You made a revolution happen. So they're saying for you to stick to your practices and regain that spiritual connection that you had in the past because you can do many things. All right, guys, I hope that you enjoyed this reading as much as I enjoyed giving it. Um, comment down below and peace.